All right, I want to talk now about the options that are embedded in mortgages. Uh, typical mortgage in American housing finance. And there's, I want to say that there is, in effect, an option on home prices because the borrower can default. And there's an option on interest rates because the borrower can prepay. So that the lender or investor or somebody uh, is short these options, has written these options, and the borrower has obtained these options. So they're long, these options. So these options uh, <coughs> work to the benefit of borrowers. Uh, they're to the detriment of lenders. Now, of course, they're going to have to be priced into the cost of the loan, so on, on average, the lenders and investors and the guarantee and whoever guarantees mortgages they're not going to lose money on average just as an insurance company is not going to lose money on average writing insurance uh, <coughs> but they're in the position of being short the option so let's talk about the home price option first that so it's pretty simple that when you uh, when you own a home uh, you've borrowed let's say you borrowed uh, ninety thousand on a hundred thousand dollar home um, and you get in trouble uh, you can't uh, you've lost your job or you can't make the payments uh, <coughs> if the home price has uh, stayed above ninety thousand dollars then it makes sense for you in order to pay off the loan let's just say you can't possibly make the payments uh, it makes sense for you to sell the home okay, take your the money out of it you know ninety five thousand a hundred hundred and five thousand use ninety thousand of it to pay off the loan and uh, keep the rest of the money so as long as prices go up you're not really going to default you're going to sell the house rather than default so it's only if prices go down that you will default. So the you know we've again we've talked about that before, but that means there's sort of an option characteristic that is until the um, the option to to default is in the money as soon as the uh, price the home price becomes less than the loan amount. So uh, people talk about the, your, your mortgage being underwater, and by the same token, when the house price is less than the loan amount, so the, the you know, your, people call the borrower upside down or the, the mortgage underwater, and from the point of view of the lender, the default option is in the money. Now the borrower won't necessarily default, but <laughs> that is that can be one of their choices, and if they do exercise the option to default, then the lender is going to lose some money because the lender can only recover, in, at least in in most states in the United States, the, the lender can only, at most recover the the value of the home, can and that will be, if will be less than the loan amount, and so the lender won't will not come out whole. So the options in the money, and the lender. Uh, can lose from a default. And so that's a sense in which an option price framework works there. Um, and in, in terms of interest rates, the op there's the option to prepay. So if you have a 4.5% mortgage and rates fall to 4%, then you then you can refinance into the lower rate mortgage and <coughs> the lender who is uh, kind of enjoying this four and a half percent mortgage rate uh, will lose the mortgage either to another lender or they can refinance it uh, themselves but either way uh, the, if the if market rates are four percent, the lender is going to give up a four and a half percent loan, and at best replace it with a with a four percent loan. So um, you know, that's the so the option to to prepay a mortgage. So the, the under American mortgages, the 
borrower has the option to prepay at any time, and uh, without usually without paying a prepayment penalty. Um, in fact, I think prepayment the legality of prepayment penalties is even questionable uh, if if a lender wanted to charge it. Um, I want to point out that when I was uh, you know, first kind of in the mortgage business in the uh, mid 1980s, these options were less valuable. So the options were less valuable in the 1980s, and it's for a couple. So for the default option, the main reason that the uh, the <coughs> option on home prices or the default option was less valuable was that there were higher down payments um, maybe less valuable might not be the, be the best term because an option can be valuable even if it's deeply out of the money maybe another way of putting it would be they started out out of the money deeper out of the money. And the reason, again, so if you have a higher down payment, uh, then the default option is further out of the money. That is, if I make no down payment at all, let's say on a $100,000 home with zero down, then if the house drops by you know a penny, the default option is in the money. So any home price drop Um, makes it desirable to uh, exercise the default option. But if you have a hundred thousand dollar, let's say with twenty thousand dollars down, which was more normal uh, thirty years ago then the price has to fall to 80,000 before the uh, default option is in the money. So again the moral of the story is the default option used to start out way out of the money uh, when people made larger down payments. And the reason that the uh, interest rate option was more out of the money is it used to cost 2% or more to refinance. And so when it when it costs, you know, 2%, that's a serious deterrent to refinancing. Well, now it typically costs less than 2%. Um maybe less than 1%. So you can refinance more cheaply. I mean, the, the, the you know, lenders will actually advertise it as zero cost refinancing. I'm not sure it's exactly, it can't be exactly zero. I mean, it's, they do go through some processing, but often it costs them very little to do a straight rate and term refinance. And the fact that it costs them so little means that the um, you need a much smaller drop in rates to make a refi worthwhile. You know, so it used to be, you know, the interest rate would have to drop, you know, like at least one and a half percentage points. let's say in 1986 or 1988 but now you know if the rate drops a quarter it might very well pay for somebody to refinance so that means that the um, <coughs> almost from the day the the mortgage is issued the interest rate option is at the money uh, is close to being at the money, and whereas it was always it was significantly out of the money uh, back when refinancing costs were higher, when the uh, sort of the, the technology of refinancing was less efficient, um, the uh, 
interest rate option was not worth as much. So the net result is that these options have become worth more, and I think what that has to mean is that uh, you know, in a kind of a completely free market, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage should be expensive. Uh, so because the 30-year mor mortgage w with no prepayment penalty and with the uh, with no prepayment penalty and no recourse, meaning that um, that the only thing that the <coughs> that the lender can go after if you don't pay off your loan is the house. Uh, you know, can't go then you know try to go after your income or your savings. So with no prepayment penalty, no recourse, that means sort of the options are present. Um, the rate has to be high now in order to uh, pr include the option premium. That is the premium for the option for the uh, option on house prices and the option on interest rates. Those options have become uh, more valuable because of these factors I just said. So that the rate would uh, would have to be high because of that, and uh, um, so we can maybe come back to that near you know near the end of the course when we're talking about sort of the outlook uh, for policy going forward. But the important point to take away from this talk is that th that you can think of uh, default and prepayment as embedded options in mortgages. They're like options on the on house prices and options on interest rates. And that uh, is very insightful in terms of understanding the pricing and risk of mortgages. And we'll get into that um, next time.